this was supposed to be it. It's first time under its own weight in a year. It's first time driving in over 20 years. But then I blew it. Like literally blew up some of the electrical components. The ECU shorted out and I fried some things. This wire here basically melted. This essential part here called the double relay let out some purple smoke. So the plan was to put in an aftermarket ECU. But on the day of the install, I noticed something suspicious. What looked like coolant mixed with oil was pooling up like there'd been a murder. And here was the number one suspect. To confirm my suspicions, I had to drain the oil. Not only was the oil discolored, but it had the consistency of jello at different points during the draining. So the electronics were shot, but the engine also needed a full rebuild. This is when I decided to cut my losses and do an EV conversion on the car. Right across the street from EV West is this place called EVLC. It's a nonprofit, and I took a class on how to do EV conversions. Step one is to strip out all the old combustion parts. But before I do that, I want to know where this thing sits weight wise. The hood was removed and the fuel tank was empty, but this was a pretty impressive weight balance front to rear. And with that, it was time to start taking parts off. This car project has turned into a perfect example of the sunk cost fallacy. It's the mistaken belief that you should continue with something simply because you've already invested time, money, and effort into it, even if it's no longer the best option. For the past year, I've been trying to get this old engine to run, and now I'm starting over from scratch. Here I am convincing myself I'm quick enough to disconnect the coolant hose and point it into a bucket before it spills all over the floor. I didn't make it. Here's where it was spilling. And down over here is where the actual drain bolts are. I only remembered that after the fact. This aluminum sheet here acts as a heat shield between the muffler and the rest of the engine bay. The screws on it were giving me a hard time, but most screwdrivers can fit a socket on the end of them to give you some extra leverage. Didn't end up helping me here. Here's that double relay I talked about earlier, and the ECU wiring harness that basically melted in place. Green is a trash bin, and red is the parts that'll be for sale. Let me know if you need anything. Back to those stuck screws. Heat is a great motivator. I consider these cheap Harbor Freight chisels disposable and it's worth it for cases like this. With that clear, we now have a great shelf for tools. Once I had decided on doing the EV conversion, I was excited to see what the rear here would look like without the muffler. It's gonna look sick. I have this cool flexible ratchet extension that I wanted to show off, but it actually didn't end up helping get that bolt out. You can see here it just doesn't get the angle. And within five minutes this thing's covered in tools. I've never removed an engine first try without forgetting to disconnect something but this one definitely takes a record for number of attempts before finally getting it out. It's important to ensure your safety screwdrivers have tension so they don't fall out when the engine drops.
Maybe if I remove the transom out, I'll get the angle I need to pull this out. Screwdriver's not cutting it. Time for the real pry bar. At this point, I was feeling kind of defeated. There was coolant all over the ground. The engine was no closer to being out. There was tools all over the shelf. And this thing was still there. The clutch and the flywheel extend about four inches into the transmission. And that's four inches I'm just not getting on the other side to slide it out. So, new plan is to take the transmission out with the engine. And to do that, I have to remove the axles. The one on the left here, and then the one on the right over here. This is actually a good example of what it's like working on an old car. With how this axle is positioned, I'm actually looking through this keyhole slot here to make sure both the wrench and the ratchet are lined up on the bolts and that my arms are routed underneath. This is a transmission shift linkage. You'll see more of this later. Finally, we're making some progress. And just like a jellyfish, we were clear. And of course, once the engine was out, it was easy to see what the issue was. This dust shield here still had two bolts that were keeping the flywheel and clutch from coming loose. And once they were out, it was that easy. This is one of those old school smog evap canister things. And if you're quick, you can see where I put JB Weld over my welded patch on the fuel tank. And with that, the only thing left to take out was the radiator for the AC here and the radiator for the coolant. Now that everything's stripped, Let's figure out what the new weight is. And also, what the weight difference is. Not bad. So here's the plan. Contactor box, DC to DC inverter are gonna go along here. The original transmission is gonna stay right in its spot, right here. And then the motor and the inverter there, and batteries up against this back firewall. Biggest question is will these batteries actually fit? I have five of the 5.3 kilowatt hour Tesla modules. General rule of thumb is you put the EV component where the gas equivalent was, but it's gonna be a tight fit. I'm mocking up these cardboard versions of the batteries slightly oversized to see what I can get away with in the engine bay. All right, so here's the plan. We have two vertically stacked and then three horizontally stacked. The issue is that shift linkage is blocking the third battery on the left. Another option is taking that third battery and putting it up top right here or offset to the left right here or even attach it to the hood as it lifts up or on the tool bench where the contactor box is going. Okay, new plan. Two batteries on the left, two on the right, stacked sideways. And then that fifth battery can tuck up a little bit tighter. I'm not crazy about the overall look, but it keeps all the batteries forward of the rear axles. Just about any way you stack them though, the shift linkage is in the way. Cable shifter coming soon. And here's where I lose all the purists. 
All these mounting points need to come off for the batteries to fit. A lot of EV conversions talk about keeping it reversible so you could go back to the gas engine, but I don't subscribe to that belief because ultimately if you're doing that, you're making compromises on the actual EV build. And if it kills you to see me chopping up this car, just keep in mind, this car is nearly lost to time as was sitting outside for 20 years. Okay, so new plan. Three batteries now fit on this side, stacked horizontally with a little bit more cutting and then two can fit on this side. That means all five are gonna fit tucked up against the firewall. And lastly, we have the charger here that's gonna go in the center of what I'm calling the bench, the DC to DC converter, and then our contactor box. Actually gonna flip those two based on how I'm gonna do the wiring. And yeah, this is where I leave you. Next episode, we're gonna look a little bit closer at the EV components, explain what they all do. And we're gonna focus on that battery box and figuring out how to get everything to fit in. Thank you for watching.